So what is the Majorana 1 and why is it such a big deal? First off, the Majorana 1 is Microsoft's first quantum processor that promised to solve problems that classical computers can't even touch. And I'll explain why in a minute. Mainly because of limitations called bits. Bits are the basic information unit for computers and qubits for quantum computers, which are incredibly delicate and prone to error. The Majorana 1, nearly 20 years in the making, is special because it uses a type of particle called the Majorana particle created by Microsoft, which is neither a solid, liquid, or gas, making it a new state of matter that better identifies and manipulates millions of qubits. But what is a bit or a qubit and how do they work? Bits are the basic information units in a computer, which is either a 1 or a 0. A qubit takes that but on a quantum level and can be in both at the same time. Think of it as a mouse finding its way through a maze. A normal mouse is going to have to go each way to figure out which way is right, and it's going to take a long time to make it through the maze. But a quantum mouse can go in all ways at the same time, meaning it can solve the same maze in only a fraction of a second. Normally, qubits are made of atoms, ions, or photons, so there's always a chance a stray particle might bump into them and collapse their quantum state. Microsoft spreads this particle across a surface, kind of like a string, with the use of the Majorana particle to hold electrons at either end of the nanowire, meaning that even if noise hits the system, the quantum state is still preserved. But to accomplish this, Microsoft needed every atom to be in the exact right spot. And I really mean every atom. Imagine painting a picture, but painting the picture one atom at a time. This precise construction allows the chip to scale to millions of qubits on a single tiny chip, which is why it took them 17 years to do. But they're convinced it's worth it because this small computer that fits in the palm of your hand is stronger and more capable than every computer on Earth combined, which is terrifying because the age of human discovery may be coming to an end. Now, if this all goes to plan, there will no longer be a need to do the whole trial and error thing. No more trying to see what works with our puny little human brains, because why would we when we have something like Doctor Strange in Endgame that can see all possible ways to do something and just tell us the best way? Imagine instead of Thomas Edison trying day and night to create a light bulb, he just did it on the first try. Or a caveman that didn't have to test which rocks could make the best spears, but just knew and made objectively the best spear that could ever be made. Or created self-repairing clothing, flying cars, and a cure to cancer all in time to go to bed by 9 o'clock. But that's just the beginning of quantum computing. Quantum computing could bring some very sci-fi sounding ideas into reality in the near future, from unstoppable AI, teleportation, breaking or making a universe, to even time travel. But that's the thing, we just don't know yet. But chances are we're getting close to the peak of our human discovery, if that's what you want to call it. But it's kind of hard to see where to go from here as we're already building things on an atomic level. In reality, the Majorata 1 will most likely be used to create new types of medicine or maybe even materials for cars, buildings, or clothes that are able to repair themselves as they're damaged. Another very real possibility is something called SNDL, which stands for Store Now Decrypt Later. This is a lot of people going online, stealing files that they can't decrypt, and relying on the fact that they'll have a quantum computer in the future to break into these. Many governments are already trying to find ways to stop these, but the most likely option is they'll have to use more quantum machines, which is cool because it may start some type of quantum war, putting our strongest quantum machines up against other quantum machines. But judging by how strong we've seen these quantum computers to be and how rapidly we're advancing, we have no idea where this is going to go. Because of how unpredictable these quantum computers are or what they may bring in the future, it can be a very scary time, but it also is very exciting. The only other option is that we just stop all of our research and stay where we are, which humans have never really been good at doing. Maybe even someday in the far future, a quantum computer can tell me statistically the best type of video to make, the best pictures to put, and the best way to record it. But until then, I'm going to be making videos just like this, so let me know if there's any topics or things that you want me to discuss in future videos.